Welcome to this platform of womanhood. My baby don't care. Our weekly podcast where we talk about women, how it is to be a woman. And as you know, we're weekly looking at the cyclical awareness the awareness of our own hormonal cycle and the archetypes that live within our own cycle. And last week we saw our ovulatory archetype, the ovulatory energy of our body, of our life, the archetype of the matter or serere this fertile creative woman and today i'd like to speak about a very ostracized phase of our, our of our cycle and of our life in general that is the premenstrual phase mirrored by the inner alchemy woman or animal woman desire woman sexual woman there is many association with this luteal or premenstrual phase. So what are we speaking about exactly? Well, yeah, going into the hormonal cycle, we are speaking about that time just after ovulation. So when ovulation is over, and that is, um, as you know, quite at the middle point of your cycle or a couple of weeks before the next bleeding, so just after ovulation, all the way up to the day before bleeding or the moment before the menstrual phase starts. Again, if the oocyte, which is the egg cell, is not fertilized, it begins to degrade and it arrives almost completely destroyed to the uterus. The prevailing hormones, estrogen and progesterone, diminish their influence and everything that was prepared to welcome the embryo degenerates and then falls into what will be the menstrual blood. Then this, of course, if you don't plan to have a baby. So the egg is delivered to the void of the uterus and is supported by some filaments that detach from the last section of the uterine tubes. And then, yeah, until the end of this phase, this egg, this oocyte that was released, begins to lose strength and brightness and start the deterioration process because it's not um, fertilized. And when this, this deterioration happens and this egg, the egg cell become increasingly wrinkled and small, there a hormone called oxytocin, oxytocin comes into play and then activates the muscles of the uterus with small spasms in order to then release the endometrium, which is the inner lining of our uterus for the menstrual blood to come out. So throughout this time, which is quite a long time, if you think about it, I could say that it's the longest phase in a woman's cycle. It's a couple of weeks, sometimes even longer, depending on the length of your own cycle where you're not fertile anymore. And for, with fertile, we mean, in, in this case, the capacity to reproduce ourselves, to, to, to get this oocyte fertilized by the spermatozoan, the male egg cell. And this energy of creation that we, uh, that we explored before is retained within uh, the whole body is speaking a different language now. Is speaking the language of care for this creation that we uh, delivered with ovulation. And the womb is becoming bigger, more water is coming to, to the body. The progesterone, which is a crucial hormone in this phase, is actually higher in quantity than estrogen here. So we could also speak about this phase as a progestinic phase where exactly this hormone, the progesterone, allows our womb, the uterus lining, to grow thicker, to grow bigger. 
and to welcome a nest within the body, within the, the lap, the lower abdomen of a woman. And why? Why? Well, for a potential fertilization. So in case this oocyte met a sperm, a um, spermatozoan, then, you know, the nest is created, the nest for the potential baby. But anyway, the nest is created um, in any case, even though there is no fertilization. Why? Well, this is due to the um, cycle meaning itself. So we have to come to a point of growth, to a limit, in order to to, to drop, to explode, to e get empty again with menstruation. We can't get empty if we don't get to a point of fullness, of becoming full. So this is what happens in the premenstrual phase. We become full of something in order to release this something, to, oh, to then let go of this fullness, to constantly play the game of empty, full, empty, full, Yang and yin, yang and yin, yin and yang. No, it's just a game of life. Um, speaking about the energy that's within this phase of a woman, it's quite a particular one. And we could say that it's the least accepted in our patriarchal, capitalistic society. No matter where we are in the world, you know, the tendency is that one, even though you may be in a more spiritual place or more feminine place like Oroville could be, or any other community or particular geographic locations of the world could be. Um, anyway, the planetary massive tendency is that one, the patriarchal, capitalistic tendency. It's not very much accepted by this society because, because this is not a productive time, physically tangible productive time. It's quite the opposite. It's the declination and the um, diminishing of physical forces. So you get tired in this time. You get also easily agitated, angry or irritated, you know, more prone to emotional states and intolerant sometimes towards the outside world. But why? Why are we meant to become intolerant to the outside world? Uh, is it because we are wrong? Is it because half of the population is wrong? Oh, I don't believe that. It's because we need to go inward. That's the solution. It's easy. It's really easy, actually. So there is a re literal withdrawal from the outside world and gradual step into the world of introspection, intuition, magic, initiation. Something begins inside your, you know, your, your, your womb, so the energy center of the belly, is growing bigger and there's some studies that show that it grows even up to two to three times bigger than before. So a lot of water is directed in the body f throughout the whole body all the way into the womb area. Energy is coming there. There is more and more attention there. And that is the primary brain according to many cultures, especially the Aboriginal cultures. It's the primary source of intuition and instinct it must make you survive and take the right decision for your life when you have to survive when you have to you know to tap into simple survival things like looking for water looking for food choosing the right food for me right now is your guts telling you it's not your brain it's your guts telling you if you're hungry or not it's not the brain, because if you listen to the brain, then you need to listen to all the brainwashing you've been exposed to throughout your education, throughout all the time that they told you breakfast is a good meal, you have to eat a lot at breakfast. But maybe your guts tell you, you know, you're not hungry today. You don't need that. You can have breakfast later, or you can just have one meal later, whatever. You can eat when you're hungry. So this is an example of what happens inside. Inside... Everything is going inward more and more. 
and all the five senses are connected with this introspection and inward um, process of connection there is a reflection within and sometimes this reflection this introspection this withdrawal they all bring you to a point of understanding that you don't want to be where you are and you don't want to do certain things and your body mind spirit organism it's not meant to do the same things you would be doing during the ovulatory or follicular phase you suddenly realize you don't have enough physical strength to to go on cycling all day long or to be in front of a computer for hours and hours. That's why we need that, to gain certain clarity. And this clarity comes from, from the capacity to go in. The power to create or destroy comes from there, from this inward process. And as you're inward, and as the society is all outward because the, you know, the planetary tendency is to get out of your body, do things done, just make, 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 produce, produce, produce until you die. Uh, well, this is quite in contrast with it. <laughs> and it can cause, again, difficult emotional states like anger, irritation, frustration, agitation of any kind. And this is not okay. So PMS is not okay. It's not because we are wrong, but it's because the society is wrong, basically. Or we could say it's because we haven't listened to ourselves and we have obeyed to outer rules that do not correspond to, the, to our inner cyclical natural rules. There is no harmony in other words, the harmony is there when your own actions and doing does correspond to what you feel, to what's good inside. So if your body tells you to rest, to sleep more, but you force yourself not to rest and not to sleep more, there's something wrong. And your body will, will, you know, will carry the, the pressure that you give it. And this pressure will turn out into a symptom and this symptom may cause another symptom and another symptom and that will be pre-PMS with um, upset tummy, nervous system, anger, irritability, skin problems, fatigue, uh, headache, etc, etc. We all know it's a complex syndrome with many, many symptoms. Speaking about the energy that inhabits this, this time, so the archetype, we have actually, uh, we need to refer to an archetype or a goddess that is again quite neglected by our current society and system of beliefs because it's not a regular one and it's a very, very feminine one in a society that's uh, regulated by masculine principles accepting a, a you know polarity which is in the other fully other understanding uh, it's not an easy job it's not an easy thing here i'm speaking about an ancient archetype an ancient goddess coming from the middle east or egyptian area of the world but i'm sure again that you can find the translation in any culture and this is the Isis or Ishtar or Inanna archetype. That goddess, that queen of the queens that comes from a darker, darker realm. She's a great goddess, a great queen and a great priestess. So we, again, we have this world of the magic linked with the world of, of the physical manifested things. Speaking about Isis in particular, she's the daughter of the god Geb and the goddess Nut. Her origins date back to long before the Egyptian Parthenon, so it's a very, very ancient goddess. And like the Phoenician Ashtart and the uh, Sumerian or Mesopotamian Inanna or Ishtar, um, she was the goddess of life and fertility, of the exaltation of love and sexual pleasures, 
and she was the mother who preceded the Red Rooms, a places where only women, the women of the tribe, were allowed to, to participate, only those especially who were bleeding. So only during the time of the menstruation. So she's a protector of, of, of women again, of, of this special power that, that we have. So people who used to look for, for her, asking for her protection and all, they used to ask for children or for love. But then with the arrival of patriarchy in the evolutionary, we could say evolution or involutionary process of the society, due to the, the offerings of menstrual blood they used to do, that used to be done, men were not aware of all this. They were not aware because these were all female spaces and they started considering as something negative and suddenly she turned out to be the goddess of war. That's quite strange from life to war, thanks to patriarchy. Speaking of uh, archetype of the archetype of Isis, you know, this is an, uh, this is an energy, a uh, tradition, a type, an archetype that invites women to stop being complacent with others, invite women to start taking care of themselves. So going in and finding their, their needs. So this is the key, the importance of this archetype. She was, yes, the sorceress. So she was the one who prepared the medicinal preparation ointments. She was also the bearer of the light in every birth, so protector of midwives and doulas and all, those who work through the channel of birth for women. And this is why Isis, the Isis archetype is the medicine woman archetype with different you know, possible qualities and facets, meaning that in this time you have the capacity to put self-healing into practice in a much much deeper way than in the other phases and on the other hand also gaining this inner truth and therefore more clarity also practice in medicine outside towards the, the others functions much better than than usual because you're in tune with your visionary woman where the energy of the third eye is developed the pineal gland or sixth chakra being, becoming again able to perceive and see beyond what's the physical eyes and you can see beyond your physical eyes only when you close your eyes and you go inward and you go and, and look inside and the inside will give you the, the, the answer. There's um, a lot of uh, emphasis and interest in this archetype in the dedication to pleasure. So whatever is the sexual world and the sexual pleasure of a woman is linked to this archetype, very much linked. And this is curious because this is not a time where you can, you can make babies by having sexual intercourses. This is interesting. So there's two weeks, I mean, at least 10 days, according to how long your cycle is, where the sexual activity in a um, in a couple, in a heterosexual couple, is not aimed to make babies. And it's there for quite a long time. It's quite the half of your cycle. And it, this means that that has another, the sexuality has another reason, has another um, quality, another aim. And what is this aim? If it doesn't go out in the creation of someone or something, where does it go? Well, definitely in. It goes in. So the, the aim or the goal, the reasons of the sexuality, the sexual energy in the second part of the cycle, the luteal phase, is definitely the inner pleasure, the inner satisfaction, and this experience of, of taking care of yourself, of nourishing yourself, of going in, of nourishing the inner world. And the fact that the woman is, is very sensitive is to, in this time is also very much linked to the realm of animals. That's why I like to speak about the animal woman when I speak about the luteal phase. So her sensitivity is high as the animal ones. The animal sensitivity is very high 
meaning their five senses as are extremely developed. Why? Bah. Well, of course they need it, otherwise they wouldn't survive. If you think of a tiger, of an eagle, of a snake, of any kind of animal, of a dolphin, you know, any animal, they, will be, they, they need to be able to smell food and water from far away, otherwise food doesn't come to you. You don't go into so in a supermarket and buy food if you're a tiger. So <laughs> nowadays everything's possible, but in general, same for water. You need to find water in a jungle, in a desert, wherever you are. And for finding water, you need to be able to smell water. Your smell sense has to be extremely sensitive. Same for your taste and the hearing, the sound perception, the touch. The touch of a snake is extremely sensitive. And according to the vibration the snake feels onto the ground, they may decide to go up on a tree if there's a danger that they can sense through their touch sense, the vibration perceived through their skin. A tsunami coming, for example. Snakes are the animal that, that show the, the other animals first that a tsunami is coming. Why? Because they sense the vibrations of the water of the oceans changing through the vibration of the earth through their sense of touch. And they show the other animals this by climbing up on the trees. And when all snakes are up on trees, well, the other animals then start running and going away and climbing themselves also. Yeah, that's it. It's a magical thing. That is extremely interwoven, interwoven and interlinked with our capacity to sense and feel in an, in a, you know, in an expanded way throughout the luteal phase and this can be a power rather than a course it's a course when you overexpose yourself to a non-natural work non-respectful but it's a power when you are withdrawn inside and aware of your own power in the in the capacity to sense and feel and also to to give an answer to the world to the people around you because you are holding a special truth kind of a paranormal time check it out check it out and check also how the uterus reacts to 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 this time considering that your cervix has moved and your uterus has increased in size cervix is it's lower it's going down during the luteal phase as your uterus growing thicker and bigger and what does it mean a uterus growing thicker and bigger well, energetically speaking, here's the second chakra, so the center of cre creativity. It's an energy center. It's a portal to inspiration and creativity. And as it's, it's there and it's growing, it connects us directly to being creative. Nothing here is mental or intellectual. We're speaking about this becoming the center of creation. It is the center where we can put everything we want into gestation. It is the center of happiness, vitality and power. It's the center of vital energy and primal, primal wisdom. Where ancestral memory of our lineage uh, is concentrated, is coming from. And this connects us with the same nature, with wildness, primitive and in, in, in innate nature. Not brute wildness. Don't think about about animal as something brute. Here we have to focus on the good qualities, the sensuality of a of an animal, the development of the five senses. And again, also there is a link with the manifestations of emotions, as this cauldron is big, and the alchemy of your inner world is emphasized. You may produce different reactions, different effects, different emotional effects. So there would be a lot more to speak about, but I will tap into the uterus soon and may also touch the theme of uterus as a sacred temple soon, uterus as a portal for sacred sexuality and the relationship with that we have with it. 
but I find it extremely important to to yeah to understand and and observe in this special phase in this alchemical detail phase where you cook your inner world within check it out and see if what I told you today has any correspondence in your own body enjoy and looking forward to next time together next week thank you